Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. Uh, so I'm back with another lithium battery review. Uh, I decided to review this one but because it's the first one that I was able to get my hands on that actually was for low temperature charging. So inside this battery is some sort of heating pad or foil or something like that that uh, if this gets below freezing it will come on and heat the battery up so you can charge it. Uh, lithium batteries don't like to be charged when they're below freezing. Most of the time the battery management system inside the RV will prevent that from happening. So people that camp in extreme temperatures, this may be of, be of interest. They're starting to come out with these types of batteries. This is a company called ReliBat. Um, hadn't heard of them before. I think they're a pretty new company. Um, one thing about it, I was going to actually take this apart and see what was uh, making the heater work. But a fellow uh, YouTuber has already done that. Actually, the company emailed me to tell me about it. Um, guy's name is Will Prouse, Prouse um, and he does a lot of teardowns on these lithium batteries, so he did one on this. Uh, one thing that he found is the lid, this here, when he pulled it up, it actually came right off. It wasn't properly glued. Now the company is saying that uh, they sent it to him that way because they knew he would be taking it apart. So, you know, your mileage may vary, whatever you think of that. This one though, I did test it when I got it. And here's some footage of me <laughs> bouncing it up and down. This one definitely is glued tight on there, that lid. Okay, so the lid is on there really tight. Now since Will totally took this battery apart down to the point of uh, removing everything, even he even cut the, the, the plates that go between the cells, the, the bus bar plates, and uh, he got a look at the cells and confirmed they were indeed, like they advertise, uh, kind of grade A cells. He said they were similar to the SOK battery. So I'm not going to do that. I'll keep the integrity of this battery in case I decide I want to, you know, do a giveaway to one of my subscribers. I don't want to give them something that I've messed with. But the main point in this video is I'm going to sort of do a different test. Uh, I am going to take this battery and I'm going to drop it in my portable freezer. I have a, a Lion cooler that's down to minus four Celsius it can go. And I'm going to let, let it sit overnight and then I'll pull this battery out of that freezer and hook it up to a charger and we'll actually see what happens, see how it performs. Reading their, their manuals, it says it should uh, draw about 4 amps, the heater, the heater pads in there. And they, uh, they should warm up the battery to a point that suddenly it can switch, it, switch on its charging. So let's go do that. That would be the the most interesting thing I can do with this battery. Other than that, maybe I'll do a discharge test. It's supposed to build a discharge at about 100 amps. And then I'll go through all the, the specs for you. Well, let's test the main feature of this battery that sets it apart from others, and that's the internal heating capability. So for this test, I've actually put the battery in overnight in my freezer here. I have a portable freezer. Um, and its app is reporting that I'm at minus 10 Celsius right now and it says status protect so it's in low temperature shutdown so I'll pull it out of this freezer here Let's see it's been in there nice and cold I'm gonna hook it up to a converter charger I have actually up there that I use for my macerator pump so I'll be able to hook that straight up and we'll see, it should start uh, drawing current. The heater elements in here should stop. I think it's four amps that it'll draw. And then it should start to charge after it's warmed up. So let's just see what happens. And there we go. It's drawing about 4.3 amps. So that should warm it up enough to the point that uh, it goes out of uh, low temperature cutoff, protect mode, and starts to charge, which is the idea. 
put a timer on, see how long that takes. So we're checking in about the nine minute mark. It's down to minus four Celsius, so it's warming up. After nine minutes, it's dropped from 10 to minus four, and we're still pumping in 4.32 amps. Ambient temperature outside is right around 10 Celsius. Okay, 25 minutes have passed. We're still putting in 4 amps. The temperature has reached 2 Celsius as far as the app tells me about internal battery temperature and we're still in protect status. Okay, just past half an hour it's woken up and you can see it's starting to charge. 32 amps, status is out of protect and it's charging. And it happened when it switched here to uh, right around 5 Celsius. So, it does work. Came all the way from minus 10 Celsius. Okay, so I let it warm up a bit more. It's reporting 11 Celsius now. And the charge current's up to 55.4 amps. Which is basically the max of the converter charger I'm using. Okay, let's do a current discharge test. So this thing is supposed to do 100 amps. just want to make sure it's capable of that. So right now I'm just running a little heater there and we've got 83.8 amps. I'll turn on my compressor here that should add some more amperage. 92. There we go. So yes, definitely capable of doing 100 amps. I think the specs say it can do up to 200 for 30 seconds. Give you a closer look at the terminals here. I find them a little light. Um, it seems to be a problem with a lot of these batteries. They don't really put a, a beefy enough terminal in my opinion. They have a, a bolt here. They call it an M8, 8 millimeter bolt. I think it's about a quarter inch. So that's fine usually if you're just going to be putting on, you know, a small lug. But when you start paralleling these together and running larger inverters off them, you're going to want a bigger lug. Like for instance, this is a 2 watt lug, 3 8 I can stack two on there pretty easily. Um, three is not going to do the trick. You're going to have to get a different bolt to do that. Also, if you get up to like three and four aught lugs, it could even be a problem with two of them. So uh, you can get, you know, more washers and bolts, stuff like that. But it would be nice if they would put a kind of a beefier uh, um, terminal on some of these batteries. Anyway, I thought I'd point that out. Another thing I've uh, had people comment before when they bought batteries with these, with these, uh, you know, handles. Once you have the thing, you can't use the handle unless you were to angle things around like that. So that's just a minor nitpicky little thing, but I thought I'd point it out. Anyway, the lugs are just, they're workable. They're, they're just okay. Okay, so let's dive a bit more into the specs and uh, details of this battery, the features. Uh, the two big features here that sets it apart from a lot of the lithium batteries is, of course, the heating function that I demoed, and it also has the, the Bluetooth function. Uh, it has an Android and iOS app. The Android app, they wanted you to download it from their website uh, instead of the Play Store, so you know, I don't really like doing that. It kind of opens up some security issues when you do that, possibly. Um, integrated heating function charge in low temperature, so it start, start heating when the temperature is zero Celsius or less, or 32 Fahrenheit. Uh, recover charging when temperature is up to 6 Celsius to 10 Celsius. So I saw it start charging around 5 Celsius. So uh, built-in BMS, sort of the standard stuff most of these things have now. Low temperature warning, voltage protection, that sort of thing. Has a sensor on the battery pack and a sensor for the BMS, the battery management system. 
Uh, the BMS looks okay. I didn't take it apart and have a really good look, but you can uh, go watch some other videos of the teardowns that people have done. Sleep mode and operating mode, low consumption. Uh, warranty is only five years, so a lot of the higher price batteries, you're going to get a 10-year warranty or a limited lifetime warranty even uh, on the battery, so that's a little low. Uh, flexible works in 12, 24, and 48 volt configurations. So that's telling me you can uh, series up to four of these batteries together. Uh, service life greater than 4,000 times, so 4,000 charge cycles, which is pretty high. But if they are indeed grade A plus cells, they should be able to, to do near that at 80% depth of discharge. Uh, so like like I say, even if you've used it that many times, you're still supposedly going to have 80% of your capacity left. Design life greater than 15 years. There's your uh, your size of your case and everything. Weight 25.5 pounds, a little a little high compared to others on the market. Uh, internal resistance, efficiency, wattage, all pretty standard for for 100 amp hour batteries these days. Recommended charge current. 5 to 50 amps, max 100 amps. Uh, like I say, also fairly standard. Same with the charge voltages and stuff like that. Over here, heating parameters. So we got down to minus 20 to 11C. Activation current, 6 amps. Heating current, 4 amps, which is what I saw. Uh, maximum continuous discharge current. So I was able to get 100 amps out of it, like they say and you can go up to 200 amps for 30 seconds. So that's sort of just like a surge capacity, voltage cutoffs, et cetera, et cetera, and a little bit more in-depth specs. But here is an important one, cell type, prismatic cell, 100 at grade A plus. So like I say, in a teardown, another fellow had uh, confirmed that, but you never know what people are sending out to reviewers versus the the average person so until a battery is sort of out in the wild for a while you don't really know everything that's one concern I have with a, a newer company like this brand new to the market uh, you're kind of taking a little bit of a risk um, when you're buying a new brand like this they don't really have a lot of uh, background here's what it looks like inside um, the cells are sort of tipped sideways and they have a plastic case holding them together and then they have the the metal uh, bus bars here, which is nice. It looks like a, a pretty nice design. Here's your BMS over here. And in here you can see there's your uh, foil heaters. Now I don't know what the lifespan of those foil heaters are and you know how they degrade over time. That's, that's hard to say. Um, one thing I would like to see is, you know, they have a, the, the top is actually glued on a lot of, uh, competitors will use screws so you can you know take it off and maybe service things you know if something comes loose or something you, you don't have to cut the thing open you can actually open it up um, they don't really mention whether it's waterproof or not um, that's an important thing for a, a heat, heating battery because you're going to get condensation issues especially if it's you know out, outside on a travel trail or something you might get a lot of condensation going on compared to ones that uh, can't be left out in the cold and are brought into a temperature controlled environment. So yeah, it looks pretty good as far as the design. Here's your pricing. Um, they only seem to have two products on this website and this is the one here, 549, which is a pretty average price for a, for a kind of a battery that's uh, made in China and they just have distribution in the US kind of the cheaper end stuff if you want to get a battery that's sort of being a, has a US company behind it and a US based company then you're usually adding a hundred or two hundred dollars on for that uh, here's some more videos so here's one where someone's torn it right apart you can see that so you can go on the website and, and watch those if you like Go down here. So this is where I, I the the website is kind of like iffy. It's I guess a brand new website. Says so like design a battery bank to grow with your customers. So what does that really mean to the end consumer? And uh, down here I also saw totally free shipping on all baby gear. <laughs> so I think they have a few typos on their on their website here. It doesn't really inspire a lot of confidence um, if you're going to be putting out quite a bit of money for a battery. 
And then here's their contacts. So say you have a warranty issue or something, that's what you're going to be faced with. You've got a map in China, a China address, a Jenny at Reliabat as your contact or through a website contact. So like I say, it, uh, you're, you're uh, dealing with the pain a little bit less for a, a battery. It seems to be, if it's true, you're getting pretty nice pretty nice cells and everything and a fairly decent be decent design but uh, you're giving up uh, some support that's uh, kind of North American based anyway that's about it for that I'm gonna maybe uh, use it a bit here just to see if anything goes wrong with it uh, after it's been used for a while I'll come back and let you know till next time Ray from loveyourv.com cheers everyone <laughs>